All right, what's going on there, everybody? So we're going to be doing a knock sensor replacement on a 2005 Ford Mustang GT 4.6 liter uh, 30 valve engine. Now, um, it's kind of funny because I did a seafoam treatment on this car yesterday, and it threw me a code for the knock sensor literally right after doing the throttle body treatment where you uh, put the damn crap through the throttle body, have it idle about 2,000 RPM, and it's supposed to flush it down the, you know, the combustion chamber and clean off the deposits, yada, yada. We get it, right? Smoke out the back and all, right? Well, after doing it, it threw me a code for P0330. And I'm thinking, great, this crap fucked up my car. Thanks, Seafoam. Well, that's not necessarily the case, actually. I think this has been an issue for a while, and it was just so happened that after it sucked it down and, you know, the engine was starting to bog down, it just then tripped the sensor to actually throw me a check engine light code, even though the code may have already been in the system for a while. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, so I did some looking at the actual knock sensor itself, and yes, it is torn. I'm thinking to myself, how the hell did this even happen? Because there's no friction going on in there. But while, yes, um, high temperatures do happen up in under the intake manifold, if you can see there, the knock sensor is directly in the center right there, in the center of the camera. Uh, you can kind of tell it's torn. It's kind of hard to focus it on the camera. Um, but it is torn down in there. Your knock sensor is down there in the center up under the intake manifold. You have one on both banks. You have one on this side and then one on the other side. I reckon the other side is probably fine because I'm not getting a code, which that one would be P0325 if we had a uh, code for the passenger side. Now, when you buy the harness, um, after, be, uh, I'll be at aftermarket or, um, you know, I'll be at aftermarket or uh, Ford. It's a uh, plug harness that actually plugs into the harness uh, itself, so that's good. I'm thankful for that. So literally, it's two sensors off one plug. Um, so it's pretty simple to, you know, tear apart. It's not going to, you know, take a whole lot of uh, whole lot of time. But yeah, it's funny because I was literally taking apart. Um, so I was thinking maybe I was getting a bad knock because maybe the deposit fouled up my spark plugs. So I did this entire bank until a wild hair up my ass told me, hey, you should probably just go and look up underneath the intake and see if you can see whether or not your knock sensors are bad. And you know, lo and behold, it's torn. I'm trying to figure out how that happened, really. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Um, it's just weird to me. I don't know <coughs> if a rat got under there. Um, it may have torn the damn thing. You know chewed through it or something but i'm always driving this car it's never really sitting so i don't know why or how that could even be um we do get rain out here uh out here in texas we do get quite a bit of rain uh but it's i don't see it being enough of a reason for a rat to want to go into a car that's constantly operating so anyways enough for the yammering let's go ahead and get this intake off so we can actually show you more in detail of the damage. Ugly dugly. So to remove the intake itself, if this video is not <clears throat> in a whole lot of detail, um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to remove this intake manifold, but I'm just basically going to give you a rundown of what needs to happen. Plus, I'm going to automatically assume a lot of you guys already work on your own shit. You just need to know where that knock sensor is located. So I'm just going to kind of briefly run down what needs to happen first, or at least I'm going to try to run down what needs to happen first before you can get to the intake. Um, so, uh, first up, <coughs> you want to remove your intake. Uh, intake super easy. Obviously, it's just, you know, self-explanatory. Uh, vacuum line needs to come off. Uh, I forget what module this is for the throttle body. Maybe it's the position sensor. Uh, so, this needs to be unplugged. The actuator uh, needs to be unplugged. Uh, throttle body actuator. Uh, the vacuum lines need to be disconnected. Vacuum line, vacuum line. And then your fuel pressure. Um, I think that's your fuel pressure regulator. This also has a vacuum line that needs to come off, as well as the sensor needs to come off. <clears throat> and then uh, you may want to go ahead and disconnect this vacuum hose from the actual bolt here. It just kind of lifts up and comes off. Uh, what else here? Um, disconnect your fuel injectors. You got four on this side and four on the other side. Uh, let's see, then what? Um, when I disconnect this harness as well, same thing as the vacuum line on that side, you just pull up and this pulls right off of 
the fuel injection rail here. Uh, and then you may want to also take it off here. Um, this little, uh, I don't know, little clip housing that holds it up, props it up. This will allow you to bring the harness to about right here. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna start with the fuel injection rails because we can't get to the intake bolts just yet because the fuel injection rail actually has to come off first. Um, you have a bolt, obviously where this is sitting, you have a bolt right there where my index finger is, and you got a bolt right there. Um, so there's two bolts there. And then you got two more on the opposite side. One right there, one right there. They're eight millimeters. So if you didn't know, it's an eight millimeter uh, deep socket. And then, let's see. Then you can start prying the fuel injection rail back. And of course the dog would be barking while I'm trying to do this. Uh, so the fuel injection reel, if the injectors are a little stuck when you're trying to pry up on this, if they feel like they're really stuck, you just kind of have to manhandle it a little bit. You can put some penetrating oil down up in there uh, where my index finger is. Put some penetrating oil in all eight of them. Uh, it should help you uh, wiggle it out. Just kind of, uh, my car is a little hot so I don't want to touch it too much, but you just wiggle it here and here and just keep wiggling it upwards and eventually it'll come loose. Uh, don't be afraid to manhandle it pretty good. Um, you know, it's been on there for years, so it's gonna be stuck. If your O-rings on your injectors get damaged, then you will want to replace those. Otherwise, if they look like they're good, you can probably reuse them, no problem. I've reused O-rings before and I've had no problems with them. Um, same ordeal with this, you're just gonna wanna manhandle it and eventually you're gonna be able to get the fuel injection rail to come off um, from the passenger side to the driver's side. Um, this is obviously your crossover. Um, it all kind of comes over. Uh, and then you're ready to take the intake bolts off. So you have, uh, these are all 10 millimeter, by the way. You have one there, one there. You have one in the center where the uh, crossover is down actually up inside of the intake. So look down up through this hole and you'll see it. And then you have another one right there. And then you have one back up in there where that stud's sticking up. <clears throat> and then same ordeal it's very pretty much the same thing 10 millimeter 10 millimeter 10 millimeter in the center down in there 10 millimeter uh, I don't know if I already mentioned that one 10 millimeter 10 millimeter and then uh, the intake manifold should be ready to come out um, oh if I hadn't already mentioned sorry you also have some plugs back here too so this is your uh, charge motion uh, charge motion plate control right here uh, that needs to be unplugged, disconnected. Uh, you also have a vacuum line. I think you'll be able to see it a lot better on the driver's side, actually. <coughs> you have a vacuum line right there. Um, if you get the um, if you get the intake bolts off first and just wiggle the intake up towards the passenger side, you will be able to get to that vacuum line a lot easier to disconnect it. Um, it's kind of got one of those coolant coolant uh, type of uh, crimps on it. You may need to get some needle nose pliers. Uh, otherwise, if it comes off by just wiggling it off, cool, all the more power to you. But otherwise, the intake manifold comes off and you can get to that uh, knock sensor pretty easily. So anyways, guys, let's go to the next video. Whew, all right, well, that not only took forever. Um, so intake manifold is off. So here's our knock sensor for bank one, bank two. Uh, passenger driver side and here is the cut now I don't know if this is a rat that may have done this may have gotten up here but I didn't see no evidence of a nest though that looks like that could have been chewed it's really hard to tell if that's been chewed or not I found I ended up finding the wire was actually put up back up in through here that's why I was having a hard time trying to find where the wire was. I think after I do some further investigating, once I pull this off, I'm going to really analyze it to see what actually done this, whether or not. Um, I actually talked to somebody on the S197 forums, and somebody was telling me that I believe this is a uh, coolant return line uh, for the uh, heater. Um, so coolant would run through here. So when it's really hot, um, some of these that came out of the manufacturing plant ended up being like right here and was touching up against this pipe and i guess it could have the uh it has the potential to melt the insulation on the wiring here and then cause it to eventually corrode and fall apart um 
it's loose because I've been already at it trying to take it off, but um, I think that's probably what had happened. Uh, I'm not sure. Again, I got to take this apart and really analyze it and see if maybe a rodent or something had uh, bit into this or something, but then you would expect all this other wiring to be fucked up, right? So I don't know. We'll have to uh, take a look at it. Oh, and I also get my part. Uh, it already came in, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and go grab it and put it back together all in the same day. Alrighty, so we have the new part installed. I almost forgot to show y'all. There it is down there. Uh, the part is actually for, uh, well, it's from CarQuest. It's not an original manufacturer. I couldn't be bothered to spend 100, what was it, $112 for a Ford one. I think this will do just fine. Um, I also rewrapped the CRT sensor. I think that's the temperature sensor. Um, that was brittle and literally falling apart because of all the heat that has been under here. Uh, so I put a new sleeve on it, wrapped it with electrical tape. So that should protect that again. Um, and uh, yeah, I also conditioned, because that little bypass pipe right there with the little elbow on it, uh, that usually goes bad and that usually can leak coolant. Typically uh, they, you know, get from all that hot and cold temperature down there. Uh, they go bad so i went ahead and conditioned it as well as the little rubber hose just to make sure that they are um, uh, lubricated and nice and conditioned so that way that they don't start crumbling apart from all the excessive heat that's under here you want to make sure that they're uh you know restored uh, so you don't have to run into that problem have to take off the manifold again anyways so yep manifold's going back on the car uh, and put this thing back together, start her back up, and make sure everything's fine and dandy. So, let's go ahead and put this thing back together. Ugly ugly. so the car is on right now. Um, before I test drove the car, I went ahead and cleared the codes, uh, took it around the block, and uh, yeah, the car seems to be running pretty damn good, actually better as a matter of fact. So, um, yeah, my codes did not come back. Uh, I think the reason why the car is a hell of a lot more responsive than it was before it even probably broke was, uh, you know, since I had the opportunity to do it, um, with the intake manifold being off, I went ahead and degreased the inside of it as well as uh, took off all the carbon buildup that was on the charge motion plates. Uh, these uh, V8s come with charge motion plates. Um, some people delete them. Uh, unfortunately, my car is pretty damn stock, so I kept them on the car. Um, you know, you just get some of those little metal deep, uh, detailing brushes. Usually you can find them at like Harbor Freight. Get some purple power degreaser. Uh, spray the inside of the intake. Spray it on the back of the uh, charge motion plates. And uh, yeah, you know, spray that crap off. Let the intake dry for a bit. Yeah, car seems to be running like super well now. Um, the uh, first gear, like first gear is like super scary. <laughs> like for 300 horsepower, this thing like gets up and goes now, like in first gear. So I'm thankful for that. This car has been pretty good to me. Um, I've had no complaints with it so far and it's pretty quiet. I don't have any engine ticking or anything like that. So I keep up all my oil changes, but that's obviously for another topic. You guys just wanted to know how to fix this sensor. Um, anyways, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and uh, I'll try to help you with the best of my ability. So uh, hopefully you guys have a good one and peace out.